Becoming a landlord is everyone's ultimate goal in life. We all wake up very early in the morning, you go work throughout the day because you want to build your own house and eventually stop paying rent. Now, in today's video, I have a very inspiring young lady here in Uganda who is finally saying bye-bye to the landlord and she's building her own house and I would like her to take us through her story and the journey and how she has got here. Now, this is not her dream house, but finally she's breaking free from the hassle of paying monthly rent to the landlord. With me here I have... Lynn Zabu! <laughs> Lynn. Hello, welcome to my humble home. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? Great. I see you're looking fresh. Let me first appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Lynn, how are you doing? I'm good. How is life? Perfect. Thank you for working hard. Thank you. <laughs> you're such an inspiring lady. Yeah. Um, I've been following your journey building this house. Mm -hmm. I remember when you when you moved in, mm -hmm. it yeah. was halfway to completion. Oh, you didn't yeah. have plaster. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little story, a little background about this area where we are, the size of the plot? Take us around the plot and we oh. talk about the house as well. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. So I've been staying here for the last four or five months. Wow. Yeah. But I purchased this particular plot of land in 2021, mm. like in 2001. So things refused. 2001? No, no, not 2000. <laughs> English, leave me alone. <laughs> like in 2000, 2021. 2021. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so I used to stay in Dubai. Wow. And... Um, I went to Dubai for mm. the first five months. It was chaos. It was hard. Mm. And I decided to come back here. Mm. But when I thought about all the beautiful things that I had seen in Dubai, I was like, God, really? Mm. You mean in all those buildings, there is no job that belongs to me? No, mm. I'm going back. So I went back. Mm. And when I went back, I was lucky I got a job in one week. And the job was paying pretty well. In one week? Yeah. So lucky. Yes. But the first time it mm. was five months without a job. Wow. Then I got very, very frustrated, like frustrated. Then I came back. Mm. And when I came back, um, I went back with faith, with more faith, with mm. more determination because now I was Hallelujah. familiar. Uh, yeah. Mm. I was more familiar with the system, how it worked and mm. what I was going to expect. Mm. Because in the first time I was lied to. Yep. I went to with false hopes with somebody has promised me to get me a job in one two weeks i reached there and it was not the case and the whole bed space thing mm. and the food wow it was a whole different yes. story so when i went back this time i was more prepared mentally. prepared mentally especially mentally you know what breaks most people is not the process, but it's because they didn't know what they were going in for. Mm. Because mentally, when you get into something, when you're prepared mentally, it kind of gives you some kind of peace, mm. yes. So when I got back the second time, Jesus was so amazing. Mm. I got the job in a week's time, and it was a very nice paying job. Hallelujah. How much are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell you because I, you know, it okay. was around 3,500 in Dirams. Ugandan shillings. That's like 3.5 million shillings. That's yes. close to $1,000 or $900 mm, US yeah. dollars. I don't know about dollars. Mm. So that, that was insane money to me. But I had other responsibilities. I had my brothers, to, I had to pay my brother's fees mm. and then my mother's rent. And then, you know, mm. so the first few months, all my, my savings went in there. And also I had a bit of debts mm. that I had to clear. You know, every time you're going abroad or in a different kind of phase in life, mm. most times you live with lots of debts mm. that I had to pay, yeah. Yeah, back home. So anyway, long story short, I started saving up for a few months, for mm. a whole year actually. Mm. And then I was able to purchase this 
plot of land. Beautiful. So I came, I bought it, put up a fence, and then went back. Because I do not believe well, this in... This fence we are looking at right now. Yes. Mm. Because I don't believe in those things of Nguliza, eh? you know, yeah, to yeah, send yeah. someone to buy you for you things. You have to be things. on site, not delegating. Yeah, no delegating. Mm. I like being on the site. Involved. Yes, involved. And you can see my home, it's pretty much of my touch. I mm. plant that, I plant this. I see. Yes. Looks like you're a botanist. Mm. I can see you're putting up like a small <laughs> garden, vegetable garden. <laughs> yes. I have yeah, a so how, uh, before we go to the garden, yeah. uh, how big is this space here, uh, the land? It's 100, the length mm. is 100, and the width is 42. 42. Yeah, so it's long, but it's not wide. Mm. Yes. Nice. <laughs> So, uh -huh. you're back in Uganda. Mm. Okay, you've got a job in, in Dubai. Yes. And then you've made some money. By the way, what, what was that kind of job? Because the was, pay is quite huge. Yeah, I was being a waitress. Waitress? In Dubai, yes. Oh, they that, are paid that, that huge? Depends oh, on the restaurant. Then. No, even today. It okay. depends on the kind of restaurant that gives you a job. Okay. It's like even in Uganda. If you work in Owino, <laughs> Your pay is not the same. In a ton of yes, we know. it's not the same as the pay of someone working in Akasha Mall. Yeah, that's right. So it's the same thing mm. in Dubai. Mm. I, I was lucky. I can say I was. I think God looked at me and he was like, "Hey, you've suffered. Let me give you a good <laughs> paying job." So, I was working in Marina Mall. That's Marina where I Mall. was stationed, and that's where all the rich people most rich people in Dubai gather. Wow. So also I would get a lot of tips. Ah. You know waitresses, the waitresses <laughs> so, will agree with me. So you would when you would end up with like how much in a month? So 3. I would 5 end up like with four or five wow. depending on how lucky I got. Ladies. You know sometimes I wouldn't get anything. Okay. Sometimes I would get more than expected. Mm. So we had this policy of getting tips every single Sunday at work. Mm. So every single Sunday, I would get like 200K. UGX. Yes, UGX. That's like 60 bucks. Yes. Dollars. Yes. I'd get like 200, 300, or sometimes 100. Mm. I see. But then on the tip, like they have a system where if you don't tip cash, you can tip card. So even the card would come with tips. So at the end of the month, if they're paying you your 3.5, they include, they the, include tip. the tip. So you end up getting like 4,000. Now your bosses over there are not buyer like here, no. that when someone gets tipped, <laughs> no. they don't take their money. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would give us the money. The only buyer were mm. the bosses on the ground, the ones who would open the box to give us every Sunday. Sometimes oh. I would take out the money. I think we would have gotten more than that because, you know, we used to get quite so some were, money. So those ones, were, were they also immigrant workers? Like yeah, you? from the Philippines mostly and India. And India. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, so at the end of the day, some months I would get my K4M, mm -hmm. some months I would get maybe 3.8, sometimes 5, mm. depending on how, but on a normal basic, it would be 3.5. And then 5. by the time the money arrived, most of the times I would have covered all my usual expenses like tax, um, I mean transportation, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and my bed space. But in Dubai, taxis are very expensive there for rich people. So mm. a worker like myself, you get a car lift. You pay a car to transport you from your place every single day, transport you, bring you back, trans mm. like that. So that's how it, it was easier for me to save. So how many years did you spend in Dubai? I spent four years there. I worked as a waitress for 2.2 two and a half years. Okay. And then the rest of the time I quit that job because my legs couldn't walk anymore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally could not feel my legs at that point. Yes, the money was good, but my body was 
tired. Exhausted. At that point, especially my legs, because it was a fast restaurant. Mm. You know this restaurant of people coming to eat lunch and go, coming to eat mm. dinner and go. It's not like a hotel. A hotel people come one, come, mm. uh, you know, but there, mm. yo, fast restaurants were something else. Mm. Um, so I quit the job because it was giving me pepe. pepe. <laughs> <laughs> it was giving me pepe, so I quit the job. Mm. Um, when my contract expired, I refused to renew. I first renewed and then canceled after the six months of, so I paid for my own visa because I wanted to do career job, you know, those things of carrying goods from Dubai back to Uganda mm. and then like that. Career services. Yes, but I ended up finding another job in a tour and travel company and I think I worked there for like six months. Mm. Yeah. Was the pay as good as the restaurant one? It would have, but I made a mistake of choosing to work for my friend. Oh. Yeah, guys, please don't do it, especially if their company is just starting out. I know it's a good idea to help your friend, to grow with friends, but my experience was not the best, mm. I can tell you. So my friend was starting up a tour and travel company and I decided to join her company because she had shortage of workers and I had known her for f quite a long time. Yeah, but it's not what I found. Um, mm. I ended up, you know, when my visa got to an expiry date, I was like, nah, I'm not renewing this visa because my body was really tired. My brain was very tired. I was disappointed from the, the fact that I had joined my friend. And then there was, that, that was the time when Dubai was trying, I think, to regulate on the number of Africans in Dubai. Yeah. That was like a very difficult moment. Most Africans were being chased out of Dubai. Visas were being denied. Um, they even became very expensive. They were chasing out of us out of buildings, like, you know, in the bed spaces. Most Ugandans really can only afford bed space because a normal rent would cost you like three thousand or two thousand and Reals. that's like your whole salary reals if, yeah if you if no do, uh dirhams, dirhams eh? yes if you're trying to have your own place like a how do they call it they call it um a single room is called what a Bed studio oh, they call studio. them studio houses if you want a studio the cheapest is like 1.8 yogi x yes Wow, a that's studio. a lot of money. Yeah. We are talking about 600 or 500 dollars. Mm. That, that is like for one month. Mm. And that is like all your salary. So most Africans opt for bed space. Unless you're getting a job that pays you over 6 million. And then you rent a house and then share it. But still you've shared it. Mm. So at the end of the day, they end up staying in bed spaces. That way to regulate on the money. What happens in the bed spaces? We hear a lot of <laughs> stories in the bed spaces. Were you involved in that kind of me. situation? Oh, God. <laughs> hey. Bed space. Bed I'm sure many people have clicked on this video <sighs> to see the house. But let's first give them this conversation. Oh, my God. You guys. <laughs> bed space. <Yeah. laughs> Let me tell you, all kinds of things happen in bed space. And you are there. You can't say anything. Yes. You... You can hear people do things. You can see them if you're lucky enough to walk in when they forgot to put the curtains. So usually they have like a bank bed. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, when I go to Dubai, <laughs> I'll have to experience the bed space. <laughs> so they have like this um, bank bed. Mm. The upper one is usually a bit cheaper. Mm. The, the downer one is usually like 800 mm. Ugandan shillings. In Uganda, that rents me a very Yeah, very nice house. house. Yeah, but in Dubai, that rents you just that bed. Wow. And then they put curtains for privacy. Wow. And then <laughs> when it's nighttime, you know, they work in shifts. Mm. You can see things and you can hear things clearly, like you're part of whatever is happening. 
And to me, the first few months, that was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine that happening when I'm next on the next bed. Yeah, oh you can God. be on the upper bed and the down bed is shaking. You know the party is going on. So you have to go on with the music. <laughs> eh? You have to vibe with the yes, music. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I think that's why. Crazy. And I think that's why it becomes easier for people in Dubai to kind of get involved uh, intimately, easily. Because mm. imagine that happen and you're on, on, on the upper mm. bed. And when, it, when it's done, you're like, I think I need to get myself yeah. some relief you as well. You are also well. charged up. Feel like, exactly. Ah, so yeah. many things happen. Um, but I worked so hard, mm -hmm. served a bit, and made sure to get myself out of the bed space. Now, when you get out of the bed space, you go to, um, I've forgotten, but there is a partition. Mm. They call it a partition. Mm -hmm. So in the partition, you're still in the same room, but they will give you a bit of um, your bed is in its very small room. Mm. Then you have your bed and then your own door you can open and then you have you basically have a bit of privacy more than if you're in a bed and it's space. more expensive and, and it's more expensive instead of paying 800 i was paying 1 million for that wow. partition so you get that little freedom yeah that's for extra 200 000 Ugandan yes, or you 60 yes, us dollars yes yes wow. so th that is basically about it but once you get used to it mm. It's okay, because <laughs> at the end of the day, you went to work to save money to better your life. Well, I w I'm not going to ask many more other questions, <laughs> because I'm prompted to ask more personal <laughs> questions, but... <laughs> you want to ask if I yeah. did? <laughs> did you? Why are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> My future husband could be watching me. I cannot disclose that. Well, let's decline that. <laughs> Now, oh my God! I you're look back to so Uganda. Guilty. You make people look guilty. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I cut that out? No, it's okay. It's, okay. <laughs> All it's right. fine. Wow. So you're back to Uganda. Yeah. Dubai is done. Two years and a half. You said. I spent four years there. Mm. Worked two and a half years as a waitress, okay. and then the rest of the time I worked as a tour and travel mm. personnel, like basically With your friend. to book, yeah, to book your tickets, to book your visas, mm. those kinds of things. Mm. And then when my visa expired, I just didn't want to renew it for seven million shillings. Seven million, two thousand dollars. Yeah, it it can also it can also go up to ten million shillings. Why? Why though? I don't know. I just got frustrated. Like, I couldn't do it anymore. My legs were tired. I was, I, basically, I was very frustrated as a human being. Mm. And I decided to come home. I had music projects going on. So I thought... Oh, by the guys, she's a musician <laughs> and she's also a YouTuber. I'm going to leave her YouTube channel in the, in the description and also in the comment. Please, let's go and support this amazing lady. She's a good musician. Yeah, so at that point, I was, I was so much into music and I had invested a bit of money in it. I could have actually built the house as soon as I bought the land, but because I was investing in music, so you can't pay fees for your sisters, for my brothers, and then also build and then also do music. Wow, you, you had, had many responsibilities. Yes, so I had to prioritize what I want. And so my thought was, if I do music and it works out, I'll get money to build mm. where I want. Oh, you and wanted then, to be a star. And then have enough make privilege. Some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it didn't go as planned. So yeah. when I came back here, I was living in a rental. Mm. In a decent, in a decent, I was living in a, a pretty decent rental. Mm. And then, you know, the business that I had started from... Um, the business that I had started, I had started selling clothes now and mm. perfumes. And also, like you order things from Dubai, I make the order for you, mm. then it's delivered. Mm. Then the business also started slowing down, so I couldn't afford the rent anymore. You know, like, for me, if I stay in a house and I can't afford it for the next six months, mm. I can't afford it. Mm. So if I think about it and I'm thinking, where am I going to get rent for next month? 
mm. or where am I going to get rent like that, then in my brain I cannot afford the house, even mm. if I have money for mm. the next month. So I thought to myself, I was like, Lynn, you can't afford this house anymore. And then you know you are a singer, people know you for some kind of high up up with profile. The lifestyle. You have to keep looking nice, you have to... I couldn't keep up, I couldn't put up with the life and that's when I started being depressed, isolating myself. But you know I have this strong faith, I have music and the good thing that God saved me from, I don't use any drugs mm -hmm. and I don't drink cheap alcohol. So I could not afford alcohol to cheap. drink. You drink expensive. Yes. Champagne. <laughs> and wine. <laughs> so I did it deliberately because when you can't afford cheap drinks, then you can't drink and mm. problem solved. That's right. So I, I, I thank God that I put it like that. So it kind of limit, limits me from doing the drinking. I see. So I decided to get all my savings hmm? mm -hmm. all the savings that i had i think on my account i was left with four million shillings only yes for you to start this project yes wow yeah i had only four million shillings and i thought to myself what can i do because if this money is done i'm done what am i going to do I'm not going to call my mom or my dad or a boyfriend or I'm just done. So what do I do? So I went to my friend who is a carpenter mm. and he does really nice crafts. And I told him, Joshua, I want a, a loft house, wooden loft house. Mm. He looked at me, I was like, what, why? I was like, because I want to shift to go to my place, mm. but I can't afford to build a house there mm. now. A permanent house. A permanent house. He was like, but that million, that four million can help you start. And I asked him, so how am I going to get the rest of the money? He said, well, God does work in his... You said his name is Joshua? Joshua, yeah. Big up to yourself, Joshua, <laughs> if you're watching this video. Joshua, Joshua was like, Lean, you don't know where God, God does things in ways we as human beings can't do those things. So you go start and believe God to continue. Exactly. I was like, yo. So when he counted for me, the car one room, eh? Mm. Because my, my, my goal was you put one car room, at least you have where to keep your things, then mm. you can go back and hustle. Mm. I didn't want to sell my things because I'm so attached to things that I've bought mm. for myself. And I was like, so if I build one car room, I can keep my things there and then I can try to look for a visa and go back to Dubai. But in the meantime, I won't have to worry about the things that I've left in Uganda. So yeah, makes sense. So the quotation he gave you was for so a wooden house a or... No, he gave me a quotation for a wooden house which, which would cost me like 2.5 million or something. Mm. And then I thought to myself, but wait. Uganda is not very safe for a wooden house. <laughs> what if I'm in the house and they break in? Mm. Or, or it catches fire. Or it that catches fire. fire. And, and then the other thing is, wooden house, that means every voice goes through goes the walls. Through the walls. Mm. So that you don't have any privacy. privacy. I was like, okay, I think I need to start the permanent house. So I started with uh, the permanent house. Mm. <laughs> I bought 2,000 bricks, I bought about 20 bags of uh, cement. cement, I bought sand, I bought whatever. I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, now this is the moment everyone has been waiting for, to see the house. Yes. Tell them their expectations. Uh, shouldn't expect so much, especially from the amount that I started with. Mm. But you should expect that it is organized and it feels like home. And you have the freedom. And I have you the freedom. You don't worry about the landlord. I oh. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, <laughs> you left us in that boat. Oh. Every end of the month, I'm like, ha, ha. Landlord, landlord. Yeah, you guys. And then utilities. I used to hate 
landlords to the extent that I would fight so hard to pay two months up front. Mm. So they never come to knock on my mm. door. So when it came to the point where the landlord could, I would ask for excuse. Bambi, this time I'm going to pay a little bit later. I was like, yeah, it's time to, to move. Yeah. So expect that it feels like home and the freedom that I get of being here, my utilities have been like down, mm. <laughs> down, down, down. Mm. And yeah. And besides this project we have mm. here, you still have more land for yes. expansion <laughs> or for putting rentals. Yes. You can build houses here, list them on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. The plan was, you know, as an artist, mm. you don't have one plan. Mm. You can, as, I, th I don't know what is wrong with artists, but you can want to put up, today you want to keep hens, mm. tomorrow you want to look after goats. <laughs> the other day you want to put up a small daycare, the other day you, you think want... think recording studio. <laughs> <laughs> you, nah. The other day you think rentals. The other day you think, hey, I can put myself a kajukuzi there. Mm. And then this becomes like a hideout place for commercial. Uh -huh. So you never run out of... You have a cocktail thoughts. of ideas, but you need to concentrate <laughs> on one, focus on one, which will actually bring in money. Yeah. The jacuzzi might not bring in as much money as the hens, hens mm. or the rentals, the yeah. what. By the way, I recommend hens, the chicken. It's a good project. Still I've interacted scared. with many chicken farmers mm. and it's quite profitable. Mm. So you should make more research about I'm it. Thinking. Now, without wasting any time, mm. please take us through <laughs> your amazing, beautiful loft house. Guys, it's not so big, but it is something I felt like I should share with some of you watching especially the youths the young people this is something who small. are scared to start exactly yeah to you break have free. your ten million is there sitting mm. and your calendar you don't know what to do mm. well mm. i hope this helps a bit that's right mm. all right so welcome to Ooh. my amazing home okay <laughs> i see so at the entrance i have my uncompleted veranda mm. here and i love green Mm. flowers mm. and you can also see flowers I right see. here mm. and uh, more plants on the other side mm. so I've put up that because I want to grow vegetables tomatoes I don't want to buy tomatoes and mm. so I put up that one mm. the sprayed ones Wait, wait, let's talk about the design of the house. Why uh -huh. did you decide to go with this design? Well, because I think I'm a unique character. Mm. Uh, not a special one, but a unique one. Mm. So I put my kitchen here. Okay. Because I want to be able to get as... Fresh air? Fresh air and light. Like, oh. I am big on lights. Natural light. Natural light, especially. I don't like houses that are dark. Mm. I don't like them. So I chose this design because here I can see what is happening here. Mm. And then if I ever, ever build houses on the other side, I can have my little space to hide. I see. And then nobody will have to, you know, inconvenience me. Then I put my bed up. Mm. simply because the house is small mm. and I need luxury space <laughs> <laughs> that I don't have money for. Well, so I had to think about something and that's why we came up with a loft house as mm. you can see. I see. Yeah. I can't wait to go in. <laughs> so the veranda is not here because the space that was initially supposed to be for the veranda was added onto you know how ugandans make their homes yes and i didn't i don't like things that look the same mm. like the neighbors thing you can mm. see the veranda yes yes yeah yes. that's why mine doesn't have it because i thought ah no i'm not doing things that everyone is doing mm. however small it is it has to be its own kind all right so that's why it's like this and you can see the doors i chose these mirrors because I don't want people to see me. Mm, if the I privacy have... glasses. <laughs> yes. I see. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
when you get in here, this is all you see. Mm. I mean, the floor is still as you see it. Mm. I have um, my stand here, mm. my mirror, mm. my ring light, which hasn't been in use for the last five months because we don't have electricity. So oh. is everything. You've not yet brought in electricity. No, I, it's, it's, a, it's not that easy to get electricity in Uganda, especially because most of my business has failed. I lost my everything basically so it's like you're starting from zero oh, and your priorities become tighter mm, food see. or electricity i see so of course you choose food mm. so anyway this is this is what you see this is my living area mm. this is my living area so i maybe i'll put a table uh table here mm. and uh i love art as mm. you can see on my walls i have a lot of the Uganda crane. <laughs> I'm proudly Ugandan. Yep. Yes, I love all these things. And then immediately you walk into, I chose an open kitchen. Mm. Even if the house is not big, you know, Ugandans, we are kind of, I don't know, rigid. Like we like things that norm. Oh, because it has been like this, it's supposed to be like this. Yeah. But because I had seen the possibilities of things, that's mm. why I made my kitchen open. Okay. And um, yeah, if, I think I'm going to put a bit of stools here. This is going to be like my Kalito dining. Mm. Mm, I see. <laughs> this is going to be like my Kalito dining. Of course, my fridge, which hasn't worked, same to my washing machine. Mm. Same to everything. So when I was living in Dubai, I made sure to buy the things that would make my life easier. Mm. You know, so I don't have to miss that life. To think, oh, I wish I did this. Oh, I wish I... So I bought these things in phases. Like every after two months, I would save up and buy one thing mm. after the other. Actually, that's how you can see everything. I didn't buy all of it at once. Mm. Like I'd save one month at uh, like two months, three months, depending on what I want to buy, buy a fridge. Mm. So another thing, buy like that. Mm. So basically, this is my humble kitchen. I see. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yes. This well is, organized. This is my, don't mind about this, I've just cooked for my dog's food. Mm. Oh, you have dogs? Yes, I have two dogs that okay. are providing me company. They're my friends, they're my uh, security. Mm. <laughs> you find me talking to them and playing with them. Mm. Yes. So, so this is the window. Yeah, this is the window, but I'm still using the plywood mm. because honestly speaking, like I said, you have to prioritize food or completing the house. Exactly. So you pause some things. I put a plywood. Is it safe? I think God is doing his job. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> yes. God is doing his job, but um, yeah, maybe once I can figure out how to put the glasses, I'll put them. Then this is to help me with the mosquito nets. Mm. Also, the rats have been disturbing me oh. because of the holes they can easily get into okay. the house. So I got this to help me with okay. the rats. All right. Yeah. That's a nice kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I have my little couch okay my little couch where i sit and watch tiktoks mm. throughout the night mm. yes i sit here and watch tiktok and sometimes my neighbors come here and we sit right here i actually had a whole set mm. but i had to give away all of it and remain with only this mm. because of space you can see if i had a big uh, set it wouldn't fit here and then the place is all congested you know how smelly congested places are yeah so i didn't want that for they are myself. a bit stuffy and this side <laughs> i have my this is supposed to be my toilet but i am thinking and thinking about it because this is my living room and the toilet is too close mm. so i'm thinking maybe i'll put the toilet outside um these are the stairs. Okay. I'm, I'm using these shoes on a daily. That's why they are here. Okay. <laughs> like I'm, I'm a YouTuber as well. So when I'm going to do my content, mm. it's easy for me to pick. Sweet and go. Mm. Yeah. 
I see. And then these are sliding windows. Mm. Yeah. I really love the fact that uh, the way you designed this loft house is to bring in enough natural light. Yes, enough natural light is mm. the goal. Mm. It's always my goal. Okay. So, and right here I have my candle holder. This is a candle holder. Mm. <laughs> so I put candles here. You can see the dust is still a lot because mm. the house is still dusty. Why is this elephant added to? <laughs> To the, I to can the, see it is dragging to the, the jungle. <laughs> to the jungle. It wants to light up the jungle. <laughs> yes. And then I have this beautiful guitar mm. that was gifted to me by a very... How can I describe this guy? He's called Kenneth Mugari. Oh, and the this, famous Kenneth. Yes. And this is his guitar. Mm. Uh, it came from the song Chibuno Muerage. This of is you, the guitar he played. Yes, this very one. So those of you who have been following his journey, mm. tell him I have his guitar this is and where I'm it not started. returning it. Yeah. <laughs> and also I have this um beautiful how do you call this one? This artistic thing. Engraving. Yes. <laughs> like from Joshua, the one who encouraged me to start building with Mm. Only four million. And then still a painting from him. Mm, Joshua? Yes, still a painting from him. Mm. And then you can see my stairs is a f full personality thing, full of <laughs> <laughs> displaying all the little things that I enjoy looking at. This is a candle. Mm. But see, guys, I suffer with dust. Mm. Yeah? Because I still have a lot of dust. So many, most things are suffering with dust. Like when I sweep, Mm. All the dust like come up. That's why you see water. I've tried to you pour sp water. spray on the floor. Yeah, to spray to reduce it. But you can, you know you can't you, you can't a hundred percent control it. Mm. And then yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> come on. And then I have these paintings. This one. I don't know why I love it. Mm. Genuinely, I guess because of the monkeys. I can see the free spirit yeah. within the monkeys. Like, I love nature. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, welcome to my bedroom. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if the light is still enough for your vlog, but it, it's uh, enough. Yeah, this is my humble bedroom. Mm. I know people ask me, Do, are you not scared of f falling down there? That was my next question. Yes, I'm scared, but you know my You're bed... You're busy I, enjoying the sleep, I and sleep then you roll on the way. bed. <laughs> I sleep down. this way. So I'm supposed to put burglars here. Are they called burglars? Like um, things that I can hold on to mm. so that I don't fall. Okay. But... Madame Bumali is still saying no. <laughs> you are not going to do that. Bumali will come. Yeah, Man Bumali will, come. will definitely come. I'm, mm. I'm a strong believer. Mm. And I have a few of my clothes in this bag. This is where I put my dirty clothes. Mm. And those are all my clothes that are in here. Mm. But it's just that I don't want the dust to directly affect them. Mm. But yeah, you can check it out. Okay. <laughs> I put this curtain. This this is actually supposed to be my kitchen curtain, mm. but I'm using it briefly here. So, yeah, this is where I hide all my perfumes. Right here, all the things that I use on my face, my this makeup kit. This looks like kit. an expensive corner. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's where I put all my things. Mm. Um, my makeup, my shoes, my bags, mm. my clothes. So mm. these are just a few of my clothes because most of my clothes are still in the in the store. Okay. Because of the dust and also because of storage. I see. So I got all the easy clothes that I can easily use. Mm. They're all here. Mm. And then those that I know that you know will be damaged badly, I left them in the storage. Mm. I understand you moved in into this house mm. at a stage where it, uh, it had no plaster. Oh, God. How did it feel? Um, <laughs> guys, it must have been an emotional moment for you. It, it was very horrifying 
very challenging. I don't know all the words that you can use. Mm. Like, I was full of emotions. Like, my emotions were all over the place. Mm. You know, have, have you ever had your emotions all over the place? Mm. One minute, I was happy like, yo, finally, mm. I'm in my thing. Like, this is my thing. It's mine. Mm. The next minute is like, you're poor. You're very poor. Look at all the holes. Mm. I was scared of snakes, literally. I think I can find you a photo or two for your viewers to see of how the house looked mm. when I had just moved in. Mm. It was full of holes. You know the holes that they use for... Putting the timber yes. through the walls, I see. They were all still there and rats would come and jump on me. Mm. I, I literally could feel everything. So I barely slept wow. most of the night. The cold at yeah. night. <gasps> the coldness was insane, especially when it rained. And now, you know, I don't have trees around the compound and you can see it's a whole big space that is open. Mm. So when it rained, it used to make the bricks all wet and wow. you can see all the bricks are wet wow. and i would think to myself this house is gonna kill me it's gonna fall on me one day yo i was terrified most of the night i would you know break down cry laugh mm. <laughs> i saw a video of you moving all in those things. Yes. you had a friend uh, who helped vlogs. you around oh that girl is a darling she she's always on my Get up, let's go, let's go, let's mm. go. So thank you to Shami Vlogs if she ever watches this. I know she's your fan, she'll yeah. watch it. She's my friend, I was with her the other day, I think a few days back. Yeah. Mm. So basically when I moved in, it was very challenging. Imagine me used to the Dubai lights. Even when I came to Dubai, I was in a pretty good mm. environment. Now you come back and you, when it rains, you're putting your foot in mud. Even when I came to Dubai, where, where I used to stay, the house, I would only see mud, like when I go to a different area. But within my area, it was all locked in. And then here I am, no water, no electricity, electricity. no windows. Mm. I'll give you pictures, like I would put boxes in, in the windows. Mm. Yeah, so when I got rich, that's when I bought the plywood. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I never knew how strong I was until I got to this. From what I'm seeing, mm. things are going to really work out for you. You're such a strong lady. You're resilient. You don't easily give up. And no. such people usually make it in life. So you're going to make it. I hope. I pray. How much have you spent so far on this house from the foundation? I cannot, you know, at first I was actually counting and recording, but there comes a time when you, you lose touch. Mm. So track. I think your touch or, tr or track, yes. Mm. So I can't remember. I'm being honest. Okay, if you are to estimate. It's about, it's more than 20 million. 20 million. Yes. And how much do you think is remaining for you to finish this house with all the beautification? Because for me, I usually see such tiny houses mm. on videos on YouTube mm. and they're usually very nice. And you think they are, <laughs> you are like, ah, that one is easy. Yeah, it's cheap, yes. that one. So um, with all the beautification and everything, uh, no. how much do you think is remaining? I guess like 10. I guess, just estimating, Ten because you need to do the floor, you need to do the burglars, you need to do the coloring, mm, the painting, the painting, and then plastering outside, mm. you need to buy the, because you see, they already wired the house, this one here. Mm, the wiring, eh? And then, but this one is not. Okay. So, which means this is where my money ended. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you even plugged in your appliances. <laughs> so it, That's faith. Eh? That's faith. Hey. Now, so, 
I don't want to raise your expectations, mm -hmm. but I want to request my subscribers, those who are watching, mm -hmm. if there is anyone who is touched by your story, you can please help her fulfill her dream of being her own landlord. You can see the house is not yet complete. You can help her with anything you can. It's not by force. If you feel it, please do it. If you don't feel it, just wish her the best. But I know there are people out there who are destiny helpers. Yeah. I've seen people's lives changing mm -hmm. through the internet and also through my videos. Oh. You get? Yeah. You just feature one's story and people reach out and they help them. Yeah. So I hope people might reach out. I'm not raising your expectations, <laughs> but let's to say say it. <laughs> actually, before I built my own house, yes. I first built for some lady in Tororo. For free? For free. Wow. <laughs> How much did you spend? I spent about fifteen. Fifteen million yes. guys is a lot, is around five thousand US dollars yes. or Four thousand US dollars. So wow. how the whole story is also long of how I got to do her house, and then people started laughing at me like, "How can you do this and that?" Because I was doing more than building. I was doing, you know, buying clothes for people, doing all those things oh. because my content was revolving around that, and um, people would be like. How can you build for other people when you don't have your own home? Yeah. And, and really, when I sat down and thought about it, it was, you know, k kind of challenging, a bit hitting, you mm. know, a, a bit. And so I was like, okay, if I put up this house and then I have a safe space to, you know, mm. then it's easier for me to help other people when I am in a better position myself. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. And then we were trying to build another house for some lady, but unfortunately she passed on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm. And that hurt that she died before I could complete what I uh, had. Hand over the house. Yes. That's bad. But hey, if you're touched by the story, please, let's help our sister to fulfill her dream of building her own house. She's happy here, but hey, she needs to complete the, the structure. Mm still has a lot of work to do. So you're a musician? Yeah, I am, that it's embarrassing for me to say, because like I told you, when you are somewhere, I wasn't way up, but I mm. was somewhere, and then your whole world comes crumbling again, like down. down. Then it's like you're starting up again, mm. and um, you're even afraid to admit that you're a singer, because singers mm. don't look like People me. expect musicians to... <laughs> to look like, I don't know how. Mm, I see. Yes. So it's... But I am. Mm, musician. Yes. Yes. Now, do you mind giving us an acapella? Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, what, what song should I do? Okay. I, I normally feel shy. You know? You give us an acapella a and I see you have a guitar. Yeah, I, as by I the way, I play guitar. Uh, you, are, you are going to play the guitar. I'm not going to play the It's guitar. okay. I'm going to play the guitar and then you sing. <laughs> now, let's do it like this. Wait. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She's a YouTuber, by the way. Yeah. So, we are going to have a music session with her. On my channel. On her channel. <laughs> so, this video is ending here. If you want to watch the part two of this, let's go to her channel and we watch the music session I'm going to have with her. I'm going to sing, play guitar, and she's also going to sing for us some of her songs yeah. and many other, other songs. Yeah. Let's have fun. <laughs> Any final words to people watching? Uh, thank you so much for hosting me on your channel. You're most welcome, and thank you so much for coming. When you said you are coming, I was like, <gasps> Ah. <laughs> it's a blessing to have visitors. Okay. Yes, I believe so. It's um, a blessing to have visitors. Okay. And also to encourage you people, um, if you have a small piece of land, like even if it's in a village, mm. even if it's in a village, mm. once God blesses you with a certain money, please go and put up something, even if it's just like a one room or whatsoever, because you really never know when you're going to need that. Mm. This is something I wish I did when I could, when I was still staying there. But because I thought I had the leverage, the job, and mm. I didn't know life would end me like this. I see. So if you have a piece of land, if you don't have, please save. And land is never far 
mm. regardless of where you buy mm. as long as it's yours mm. it's yours mm, and later you can change to where you want exactly yeah so instead of buying iPhones well if you have the money to buy iPhone and whatever and then save aside to do the land and please do it because you never know when you're going to need it but my last last final word please be kind because you you reap what you sow mm. eh mm. that's how they say it yeah. you reap what you sow mm. if you if you sow kindness believe me at a certain point in life it's going to come back to you exactly and if you didn't do it then it will not come back to you mm. so be nice be kind especially with your words because some words can kill people when they are still alive you know they are living but they are gone 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 so be kind with your words mm. yes well it's been linzabu on uji connect Thank you so much my sister for welcoming That's me. That's how brothers <laughs> do like. <laughs> By the way, she she's a Mtoro and my wife happens to be a Mtoro. Oh. So na shemerera mnonga. Muno. Na semererwa. Na semererwa muno. Muno. All right. So, let's say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's meet on her channel. Don't forget we have a music session with her. Let's meet there.